a good council person is one who, ca who caters more to the citizens against virtually everything than you would with those who you already have on your side. Because in order to get harmony and in order to have credibility in the city council, you must bring everyone in and you must have support from everyone. There's no such thing as a citizen of Marco Island against virtually everything. Thank you. Yeah. Jerry Gibson. My question is for uh, James Recker. I'm afraid uh, James Recker is not here. All right, then I'll settle for Frank. I have a McKenzie James here I could pull up. <laughs> He'd probably get more votes than you. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's his son. It's his son. <laughs> Frank, I've got to ask you, uh, uh, we, we touched on budgets earlier. I know you uh, had asked uh, Dr. Guidry about it. Um, where, what potential cuts, budget cuts, do you see, and are there any sacred cows that that you're you look at in the in the budget? Do we get one lifeline, Ross, or two? <laughs> Your pleasure. Um, the, the the general fund is tight. That's that's the problem we face. The fund is tight. Why? Most of our money comes from ad valorem taxes, about 72% of our budget, 08 for about $13 million. So when you take the state rollback plus decreased property values, our income sources are going down. So this year we got about $18 million under the cap. Of that, the biggest chunk is, not surprisingly, police and fire. They each take about $4 million. And I've been asked this question on the streets, would you consider cutting police and fire? And of course, for many reasons, economic, politically, and everything else, you don't want to say, well, yes, I'll consider that. So I looked hard to answer those questions because they are the biggest portion of the budget. When you look at the numbers, each department's got about 35 personnel. Each department gets about $4 million. You know, we added a couple of firemen last year. We had a couple of police officers last year. We have 10, we have 10-hour uh, shifts for firemen, and there's, uh, and, um, I'm sorry, we have 24-hour shifts, 10 firemen on each shift. The response rate for the fire department, 2,500 emergencies locally last year. Rate, of the time for response going down. Police department, four shifts, six officers on each one. The crime rate down 44% from the year 2000, the first year we became a city and had our own full-time police department. The crime rate on Marco is about two-thirds of what is in Collier County, less. And one th two-thirds less, I'm sorry, one-third less in Collier County, two-thirds less than Naples. And our policemen to 1,000 permanent residents ratio is less, it's two. It's less than either one of those. So. When you look at these things and you say, where can we cut? Too many personnel, too many firemen, too many police. And you look at the rates we're of, re of, of what we're getting for our dollar from those two, they may not be sacred cows, but I'd say they're pretty holy ones at this point. Yeah. Well, one thing, too, you have to keep in mind, the, the police department, and I've, I've heard the same comments, the police department was brought in through referendum. So, uh, obviously, to remove the police, you're going to have to have a referendum. And, and I think you're right uh, in that. But are there any area, pardon? No, the police department was brought in by referendum. Uh, but budget cuts, uh, I, I think there are some. First of all, we've got to tighten our belts in every area. Um, I think it's important that, uh, to me, there's a lot of duplication especially when you start looking into like the uh, 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 Parks and Rec. Uh, I, I'd like to see us form a tighter bond and get back to having a tighter bond with uh, the YMCA. I think there's, uh, I've noticed a lot of duplication in programs that go on. Um, I'd like to see us, I, I certainly don't want the children to suffer, but I think between what the Y offers and what the 
the city would still offer that there would be plenty for the children. Uh, I'm not so, I'm not, I really want to see about this uh, teen center. I think we should make it a, a senior center and then we all go home by seven anyway so then the teens could take over and we could, everybody could use it. But, but there's a lot of things that, that can be done. I think it's very important and we better start tightening our budgets, especially if these referendums go through. So, thanks. Frank, you might as well remain. Eeny, meeny, miny. Uh oh. Butch. Uh -oh. Butch. I was getting tired. Butch. I've heard you and Roger both talk about civic involvement, showing up at council meetings, et cetera, et cetera. I, for one, have spent a good number of years on this island involved in many organizations, devoting a lot of time to different civic organizations. My question is this. According to the Board of Election Records, you both filed registered to be voters in 2006. Neither one of you have any history of civic involvement prior to registering to vote, and less than a year later, you're running for city council telling us what's wrong with the city. My question is, if you're elected to council and people disagree with you, would you encourage them to go to civic organizations for support, or would you encourage them to file suit or go for a referendum? Recall. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure that I completely understand the question. If, if, if someone disagrees with me, then I would engage them and I would try to find out what the basis for their disagreement is. Um, and work with them to uh, try to satisfy their uh, their wants and desires. It's it's not a matter of uh, you know I showed up at, at city council meetings and all of a sudden decided that uh, this was this was not uh, something that I agree with. So therefore I'm going to I'm going to start uh, uh, disagreeing with everybody and and eventually run for city council. I was encouraged to register to vote down here. <laughs> Um, by a friend of mine, uh, just so that I would be uh, able to do this, but it wasn't my intention at the time. But the reason that I am so deeply involved, and I am deeply involved in this, I may not be a member of the chamber or uh, belong to any of the civic groups, but that's no, uh, no casting no aspersions on Marco Island. I'm just not a joiner kind of guy. Um, but when I went to city council meetings and I heard statements that our canals were being polluted uh, from a councilor, and then that proved not to be true, and nothing happened about that. You know, I mean, that was a lie to the people at a city council meeting, but nothing happened. That annoyed me. That bothered me. Um, that went on in various other ways, but. Uh, this whole thing has taken on a life of its own, and it's not about sewers or septics, and it's not about the SDRP. I mean, we, we have a situation on Marco Island that needs to be corrected. Our government is completely out of touch with the people, and I don't believe that if I have someone who disagrees with me on a point or a policy, that I may eventually make if I'm fortunate enough to become a, a city councilor, uh, that I won't be able to go up to them as I could go to you right now and discuss the matter and come up with an amicable decision. Um, my, <laughs> my response, my bias is, if someone comes into the community and registers to vote, in 2006, and less than a year later, they're wanting to lead the community. My inherent suspicion is they really don't have a feel for A, the community, B, the community organizations, the history of the community since incorporation, and how all the citizens feel about different issues over the period of time involved. I understand you saw a problem and you attacked it, and I appreciate that. My bias is, Without the global view of the island, you really can't know where most of the people are coming from. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen.
Okay, that completes two rounds, and that was a pretty fast hour and ten minutes, wasn't it? Okay, um, hon, would you pass out the drinks? that driven to drink by now, and I was remiss in not passing that out before. Thank you for doing that, Bill. That's her story, and she'll stick to it. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, and I want to mention now, while we take a quick breather, is that following this round of debates, there will be opportunity for your turn, questions from the audience. And of course, that's going to be dependent on time. And I'm going to try to step it along a little bit. But I would like, when we enter that phase, after the next rounds of um, debates, I would like, when we finish that phase, please start to fill out your ballots that you have on you. The reason for the time then, while you're doing questions to the candidates, the reason for that is we would really prefer that you make a judgment on your ballots based on their debates, as opposed to ba based on questions from the audience, which may or may not be clearly expressed. So when we finish this round of debates, and I'll announce when it's all over, I love the power, start filling out the ballots. When they're completed, we'll have someone collecting them. OK, let's go on now to round, oh, excuse me, is there a question? Go ahead. Gentlemen, as you know, the, Wait, this is not the, time. the island has had a lot of controversy, and a lot of controversial issues have to be voted on. My question to you all is, how would you make up your mind how to vote on a controversial issue? Okay, uh, thank you for the question, but let's hold that question to the phase when we have questions for the audience, as opposed to right now. I thought you had a question, uh, Jermaine, to this right now. Okay, let's get on with round number three, starting with seat number one, which happens to be occupied, actually it's two, by Dr. Guidry. Oh, no. It's not. We're just continuing with the rounds of challenger and challenged. Yes, this question is for Mr. Hall. Roger, uh, when we finally succeed in stopping the, S the STRP, what are we going to do with the... When, please. What are we going to do with the septic tanks, and how will we uh, make sure that they are functioning normally? I'm <coughs> Excuse me. I've been a major proponent of the Keister plan that was advanced uh, two years ago, three years ago. And first of all, I'd like to correct Dr. Recker. I became a registered voter here in, on uh, November 9, 2005. But moving forward to that, to the question, uh, the Keister plan proposes that we would establish an inspection plan, which the county is actually working on, Collier County is working on right now, where all its uh, tanks would be inspected every three years. They'd be pumped every three years. They'd be monitored. If there was a problem with the tank, the tank would be uh, uh, fixed. If, if there was a sewer line in front of the uh, tank, uh, the septic system where there was a problem, the, we would connect uh, the person would be required to hook up to that sewer line and pay the impact fee at that point. But as long as your septic tank was functioning properly, you would not have to hook up to the sewer line. If it came to pass that a certain section of the island was experiencing an, an unusual or inordinate number of, sewer, of septic system failures, then that section would be serviced with a sewer line, which would be put in much like the infrastructure of your uh, water line or, or power line or, or whatever else. Um, the, um, I think that's... Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I've, I've, I've been a uh, doctor here on uh, the island for about 10 years. And uh, every working day that I spend on this island, I, I talk to the people of uh, Marco. What makes them happy, what makes them sad, what, and what, what makes them mad. When this, uh, the STRP began to, to really get the rec recognition 
The one question that I always heard from, from people, they said, you know, I don't understand. My septic tank was just cleaned six, uh, six months ago. And the guy who cleaned it said, hey, you know, it's working fine. I, I don't understand why I have to pay some $20,000 for a sewer system when my tank is, is, is fine. And those are the things that, that I would hear that uh, led me to uh, suspect that, you know, that something is, uh, something is, is, is foul when it comes to the, uh, the sewer um, uh, plan. And it's, uh, it's those things that, uh, that, that motivated me to really get, get, uh, to get involved in this. I, uh, you know, I don't have the 85-page the budget of the Marco uh, uh, City memorized, but I, but I, I do know what, what makes the uh, people of uh, Marco tick. Thank you very much. Thank you. Butch Nealon. I have a question for Jerry Gibson. Over the, uh, well, certainly over recent years, we've had a lot of construction activity on the island and a lot of uh, contractors doing work on the island. Uh, several issues have come up uh, regarding the contracts and the uh, ability of the city to enforce certain clauses in the contracts and the city's uh, resistance to that. What would you do to uh, enforce or to ask the uh, city to enforce the contracts? Oh, uh, can you be more specific? Yes, we have uh, liquidated damages clauses in our contracts right now. Okay. And they're not being enforced. Okay. I assume you're also probably referring to the uh, debacle with the asbestos and and things of this nature? Yes, that's certainly a part of it. Okay. Um, I think it's, it's, I can't answer for what has been done, uh, but I, I certainly feel that uh, uh, if there are damages, we sh they should be pursued. Uh, it's rather straightforward to me. Uh, if there has been neglect, obviously, or malfeasance, they should be held accountable. Um, but. I think everything must be tempered. Uh, there's not always hidden agendas and there's not always, uh, that's kind of what concerns me about some of the attacks that go on. Um, there's a lot of reading between the lines. Sometimes it's just a clear cut accident. Obviously the asbestos I think was, was fairly obvious that it was uh, uh, Hurricane Wilma was coming and, and somebody made a mistake and uh, fortunately it, w it was rectified without anybody uh, suffering for it. So um, I don't think there's any doubt there should be culpability. Absolutely. Um, thank you. I, I, was, I also agree that there's, there are a lot of areas in our contracts where they are not being enforced. Um, where we need to look long and hard at them. And certainly the asbestos was uh, a lot more than a few pieces of pipe put on a, a mulch pile. I think that fairy tale's fairly been uh, uh, dispatched. But the fact is, is that the citizens of Marco Island ended up paying a million dollars to clean up that asbestos mess that was caused by a contractor. And had we enforced the contracts, that million would still be in our coffers, and they would have still had to clean up the mess. Thank you. Wayne Waldeck. I'm going to ask this of Roger Hall. It's a question that was asked already. And Roger, given the financial conditions of the day and you are forced to make budgetary cuts, what would you consider doing with the police department and fire department budgets, or do you consider them to be sacred cows to be exempt from cuts? I went to the budget hearings this summer, <clears throat> and I was quite somewhat encouraged by the first day we, we cut $1.2 million out of our budget. And I said, gee, this is starting to work. 
Well, the next day I went back and they found 1.8 million someplace with smoke and mirrors, and all of a sudden all that $1.2 million in budget cuts went away. We can afford all this stuff. Uh, in terms of our fire department and our police department, we, get, we send $17 million to call your county for our police department, for a sheriff's department. We get absolutely no return on it. We send a like, I don't know the exact number, I think it's maybe $13 million for our fire department. We should have, instead of a spin doctor working for the city manager, uh, uh, Lisa Douglas, we need a lobbyist. And we did a citizens group to lobby call your county to start getting back some of the $100 million a year that we send up there that doesn't come back across the bridge. We need them to give us a return on our investment. For us to send $17 million over for a sheriff's department and get nothing back is absurd. And not to have any conscientious effort to lobby to get those monies back is also absurd. I would also touch on this, this whole new level of taxation you're about to get slammed with, which is this assessment for this fire district where they're going to pull $4 million out of, the, uh, out of the budget and put it into a special assessment district. The instant impact of that is that a special assessment is non-tax deductible. So for us folks that are in a third tax bracket, that $4 million all of a sudden is going to cost us an extra million and a half. Secondly, is just freeing up. They're presenting it to us as a uh, revenue neutral. It's being, it's alternately being presented as revenue neutral, followed up by being, uh, well, we're going to use this for the bridges, sort of. The real bottom line is they're going to take $4 million out from under the cap, out from under our tax base. They're going to create a special assessment, and that $4 million is going to stay right there, and they're going to use it for whatever dr they dream up. And they can be substantial. If you look at the growth of this government that I just read off earlier today, where we got we put in 13, 17 new employees last year. You know, it's time to turn this thing around. I have never seen a project come before this council they didn't approve. Everything that came up got approved. So. I guess you're not going to answer the question that I asked you, so I'll just pass. Thank you. Roger, you may as well have stayed up there. Well, I think um, I think I'd ask Dr. Rucker. We're starting to see the, the bleeding of taking services out from our general fund and putting them into special assessment districts. This first one that's going to be this, this on the table is our fire district. Parks and Rec, which is another million eight per year, is right behind it. The City Hall is already talking about that. <coughs> Excuse me. The police department um, is also being considered for similar treatment. How do you feel about taking all of those things out of our general fund, put them into special assessments, and charging the people for them? Should that go to referendum, or should that be done by a resolution? Well, first of all, only certain categories can lawfully be put under a special assessment. Fire is one that the Florida courts have upheld. You can't do police, it's my understanding. I do agree with you that y you don't play shell games with the money like that. And I believe I heard council commit, I may have heard wrong, that they were going to reduce the tax in the general revenue side dollar for dollar for what was being allocated under the special assessment. That's the way it should happen. Now, why they did it, I think somebody candidly admitted, was to free up, potentially free up from the general fund, money they wouldn't otherwise have. That's, that's part of the shell game. Why it's necessary, why that council feels it's necessary, not that they've approved it yet, but not, why they're going down that path, I can only speculate. But I do agree with you. If you're going to take X number of dollars out of here, make it a special assessment, then you should somehow, dollar for dollar, give the citizens the break from that money in the budget. Agree. Two minutes. Well, the, 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 the bottom line is, 
is that what the council is not pro is proposing is not to do dollar for dollar. They give initial lip service to dollar for dollar. They bring up somebody that stands up there and says, "Gee, I just compared this. I'm going to it's going to give you, be a 10% reduction on my taxes, which is going to save me $582, and my 33 cents a foot is only going to cost me $610. That to me is a wash." Then, so that conveys the impression it's going to be revenue neutral. The Chief Murphy stands up there and says it's revenue neutral. Ten minutes later, they're talking about using this new source of $4 million to fix the bridges. Then they start talking about, well, we've got to let the people vote on it. Well, yeah, but let's not do that. Let's just have a resolution. We'll have public hearings, just like we did with the STRP. We'll let them all come down here and talk. We'll let them run their mouths and complain. But we're going to pass it. We're not going to put it out for referendum. It's not slated for referendum. It's slated for resolution. And the, this is an abuse of us. And it continues to, we uh, don't have a representative government. We have a government that wants to buy everything they ride by and see they might like. They drive down the street and we've got a million dollar lot that's worthless next to our wastewater treatment plant. And they say, oh, this thing sold for 275000 two years ago. We ought to be able to buy it for a million today. <laughs> don't laugh. That's exactly what they're doing. So this city is out of control financially. It's, it's going to break us. It's going to ruin this island. We cannot afford this total undisciplined, irresponsible spending. Okay. Uh, Joe Betty's next, uh, Beatty is next. Uh, but I just want to make a comment, a quick comment. Uh, we have a tendency to digress from the question and the answer. I would appreciate it if we stay a bit more focused on the question and the response. Okay, Joe. Jerry, I've got a question for you. Joe, I've got an answer for you. All right. That's a good start. I was reading over your campaign literature, and one of the things I noticed in there, Jerry, that you were talking about was being positive. I think I got that right, did I not? Yes. Last evening, uh, uh, or was it, it seemed like last evening, but Monday evening, we, many of us, got up to the podium and we gave the, uh, the council an opportunity to try and be positive by not voting on things that didn't necessarily have to be voted on tonight, namely the STRP and buy, really buy, uh, buy in with the people. I didn't notice you get up and talk about being, having them be positive. Is the positive only for those of us who disagree or does it also be positive for our representatives? Joe, I think it's, it's, it's the whole tenor of, of things anymore. Um, as you all know, I, you know, I've lived here 21 plus years, almost 22 years. Um, I remember.